Today, I'm excited to announce Promptim, an experimental library for prompt optimization. At its core, Promptim builds on top of evaluation-driven development. Evaluation-driven development is a process we've been enabling for a while with Langsmith. With Langsmith, you can build datasets, define evaluation metrics, and then track those metrics over time as you change parts of your prompts or part of your system. This makes sure that when you make changes, you're actually improving on metrics that you care about, and you're not introducing any regressions. We've heard people asking for prompt optimization for a little while now. There's a few reasons for this. First, it can save time. Prompt engineering can take a lot of time, and the idea of automatic prompt optimization offers to save some of that time. Second, it can bring more rigor. Rather than blindly making changes, you're letting some process do that and you're just measuring the outcome. You go from working on prompts to defining data sets and building evaluation metrics. Third, it can facilitate swapping between models. Rather than spending time on prompt engineering, which is often model specific, you spend your time on defining data sets and evaluation metrics, which are not model specific. The core idea of Promptim is pretty simple. You first specify a Langsmith dataset, a Langsmith prompt to optimize, and then you define evaluators locally. We then run the prompt over the dataset, or some dev split of the dataset, and we measure initial metrics. We then loop over all the examples in the dataset, or the examples in the training part of the dataset, score them, and then pass all of those to a meta prompt, which suggests changes to the original prompt. We then use this new prompt that the Metaprompt produces to score the data set again, or the parts in the dev split. We compare the metrics of this new prompt to the metrics of the old prompt, and if it's better, then we keep it. We repeat this cycle n times. We've also optionally added in a step where you can leave human feedback. This uses Langsmith's human annotation cues to do that. This is useful when you don't have good automated metrics or you want to provide more color and optimize other things than what your metrics are measuring. Let's take a look at it in action. First, I need to make sure that I have the proper setup in Langsmith. So here I have my application, my email assistant. I can see that I have a prompt defined. This is the prompt that I use to triage my emails. If I click into it, I can see that it's kind of simple. We'll work on improving this. I then need to make sure that I have a data set defined. This is the data set that I'll be optimizing. It has about 20 different examples. Each example is an incoming email and then a triage result. This is a multi-class classification task. Let's now get started optimizing. First thing I'm going to do is pip install Prompton. I'm then going to make sure that I have the proper environment variables exposed. I'm going to expose my Langsmith API key so that I can connect to that, an Anthropic API key, that's what the meta prompt will be using, and then an OpenAI API key, that's what my prompt, the one I'm trying to optimize, will be using. I'm going to pause the video and do that so you don't see my secrets. I'm now going to create the task. A task is just a representation of something to optimize. So I'm going to put it in a directory called email opt. It's going to prompt me for a few things. It's going to prompt me for a name. I'm going to call that email opt as well. It's going to prompt me for the identifier of the initial prompt. This is just email triage. It's now going to prompt me for the name of an existing data set or URL of a public data set. This is just Harrison email assistant few shot. A description for a task, classifying Harrison's emails. And then it prints out a bunch of stuff. Notice that it reminds me to implement my custom evaluators in email opt task.py. Let's go into email opt and see what's there. I can see that there's two things. If we look at the config.json, we can see there's a few things. There's the name of the task that I'm optimizing. There's the data set that I'm going to use. There's the description that I typed in. There's a path to the evaluators. I'll need to change this. There's some evaluator descriptions. I need to change this. 
Then there's a config for the optimizer, so I'm going to be using Claude Sonnet. Then there's this initial prompt, email triage, and there's a model config. This will use this model if it's not provided as part of Langsmith's prompt hub. And then that's basically it. Let's now define some evaluators in task.py. I can see here a nicely populated template for me to define some evaluators. I've got this example function, and then even some comments that contain the schema of the data that I'm working with. So I wanted to define a simple accuracy evaluator. So I'm going to change this to accuracy, and then I'm going to change this to accuracy down here. This is a list of all the metrics that I want to calculate. In this case, there's just one. I can now look inside, and what I really want to do is I want to calculate the score as just accuracy. So the predicted thing will actually just be output reference. That's what I call it in my output schema. And then I want to compare that to the reference outputs, which contain this triage key. So let's do int predicted equals equals reference outputs triage. I'm going to update my key to be accuracy. This is the name, score stays score. I'm going to get rid of this comment. This comment can be useful to pass in things to help the meta prompt, but I'm just going to remove it for now, and I'm going to save it. This is my evaluator that I've defined. I'm now going to go in and modify the config.json that I have. So this is what I covered earlier. I've now opened it up in a text editor. I can see here that I have evaluator descriptions. These are descriptions of the evaluators that I'm working with. The reason that this is important is these will be passed to the meta prompt so that the prompt knows exactly how to optimize the scores that it's getting. Otherwise, if it sees some evaluator metrics, it may not know exactly what those mean or how to improve them. So I'm gonna change this to be accuracy. And this is the name of the metric that I just defined. And then I'm gonna change the description of what it is as well. Great, this is my new config. Now it's time to actually optimize the prompt. Let's now kick off the optimization loop. We can run the promptim train command and pass the config.json. We can see that it prints out the original prompt and then it calculates a baseline score. It gets a baseline score of about 42%. It now runs the first iteration. It passes back this new prompt with green and red highlighting where it changed the prompt. It then prints out the new score. We can see that it improved to 57%. It's now going in to the second iteration. It has a new prompt here, but this is actually worse. It decreased down to 28. So the final prompt that it uses is the one that scored 57%. And we can see what it looks like here. We can also see what it looks like if we go to the Linksmith UI. If we go into our prompt now, we can see that it's been updated to this new prompt that the meta prompt suggested. That's it for the demo. I didn't cover how you can annotate results using an annotation queue, but that's a key part as well. As for future things, we want to push on a few different angles. One, we want to integrate this into the Linksmith UI. So you can do this all from Lingsmith. You don't actually have to use a command line tool. And so we're actively working on that. We're also actively working more on dynamic few shot prompting. So right now we rewrite the prompt, but there's other ways to optimize prompts. One of the main ways is by including examples. And so we really want to push on that. Promptim right now uses a pretty simple optimization step. And so we want to work on more advanced methods. And then finally, we want to work on optimizing LangGraph graphs as a whole not just individual prompts. Thanks for watching, and if you have any feedback, we'd love to hear it.